This is the Dating VR News Flash for week 20 of 2017. Hi and welcome to the Daydream VR News Flash. My name is Sebastian and this channel is called Daydream District, bringing you the latest and greatest of Daydream VR. So if this is your first time here and you would like to stay up to date about anything Daydream VR, consider to subscribe. The last week has been full of exciting news for the Daydream VR platform and the reason for this is of course the Google I.O. conference that took place last week. With the announcements made, Google took us all by surprise and showed us the future of the Daydream platform and I couldn't be more excited about it. Let's start with the biggest news first. Google introduced a new class of Daydream devices which are called Daydream Standalone Headsets which include everything that a user needs to delve into Daydream VR, no PC or phone needed. Now what's most exciting about these standalone headsets is that they come with full positional tracking without the need to set up external sensors like you have to do with the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. Instead, the headsets come with additional built-in sensors that will track the headset's position in space, something that is called inside out in the VR industry. Google calls this technology WorldSense and without a doubt WorldSense will make the Daydream experience much more immersive. The lack of positional tracking had been the big disadvantage of mobile VR as compared to the tethered devices like the HTC Vive, Oculus Rift or the Sony PSVR. With the new standalone devices Google also follows the platform approach in which it allows third-party manufacturers to build the actual headsets and in turn only provides the hardware requirements and the underlying software ecosystem. Google has worked together with Qualcomm to design a standalone headset reference model that third-party hardware manufacturers can use as a blueprint to design their own devices. Wow, this is incredible news. With the upcoming standalone headsets, Google is tackling several problems at once. First of all, while phone VR is already very simple, for some people it was not simple enough. Because those dedicated standalone headsets don't need a phone or a PC to get into VR, those devices will be the simplest and easiest ways to get into VR. Then on top of that, for phone VR, Daydream was only really interesting for those who were already invested into the Android ecosystem. For the millions of iPhone users who did not want to give up their iPhone, Daydream was simply not the right value proposition. However, with these standalone devices, this has totally changed iPhone users can simply hold on to their beloved iPhones while simply getting one of these Daydream standalone devices. But for sure the most exciting news is the introduction of the WorldSense positional tracking technology. We had all hoped that one fine day Google would merge its room sensing Tango technology with Daydream, but that this day came so fast is a pleasant surprise. After introducing this new class of devices, Google announced the partners which would manufacture the first two headsets working closely with two amazing consumer electronics companies to build the first headsets. First, HTC, the company that created the Vive. We're excited about it too. They're a leader in VR and we're delighted to be working with them on a standalone VR headset for Daydream. And second, Lenovo. We've been partners for years working together on Tango and now we're excited to work with them on VR. These devices will start to come to market later this year. Now this has been quite the presentation so far and Google cooperating with HTC Vive is the icing on the cake. In the same presentation, Google has announced some very good news for owners of the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. Both devices will get a software upgrade in summer which will make them completely daydream ready. This is fantastic news for the daydream platform as well because with one little upgrade there will be millions of new daydream devices. And next to Samsung, LG will also join the Daydream party with one of their upcoming flagship devices. Google did not go into detail what kind of model this is going to be, but I speculate it's going to be a device of the V-series. That were the Daydream related news of day one of the conference, but there was still day two. And on day two we learned more about software related news. Here the big news is that Daydream will get a big overhaul and this Daydream 2.0 update is called Euphrates. Euphrates is going to run on both phone VR as well as the standalone headsets and will be powered by Android O. 
with Daedrum Euphrates, all of the system UI will be accessible in VR. So you won't need to go out of VR to check a notification or to switch to another app that was running in the background. Of course this update was needed for the standalone devices anyways, but this is a welcome addition for phone VR as well. The Daydream UI will also get an update with more curated content categories that will make it easier for you to find the apps and games that you are interested in. And with Euphrates, Google Cast support is finally coming to the platform. From within VR you will be able to choose to which device you would like to cast your VR experience. Finally, the picture shown on the outside screen will not be the VR double picture, but a single one, which will make it so much easier to follow the action. And of course, for me to record all those daydream videos for you. On top of that, taking screenshots and short videos of what happens in VR is only a click away. That's it for Euphrates, but there's still more news. Finally, Google Chrome is coming to daydream VR. It took Google more than a year after the Daydream launch to finally offer a browser that can be used from within Daydream. But finally users will be able to surf the web from within VR and when looking at the presentation it seems that this might be something you would actually want to do. When coming across web VR content the browser will automatically change to full VR mode to let you consume the content as it was intended to be viewed. Videos will be displayed on huge virtual screens and all your bookmarks are available in VR as well of course. So good news, you will soon be able to check out daydreamdistrict.com from within VR. But we have still not reached the end yet, the next announcement was about social experiences that you will soon be able to have while watching videos. The YouTube VR app will get a major update and allow you to watch videos together with your friends. Instead of sitting together in a virtual room, you will all be in the center of the VR videos. You and your friends will be depicted by avatars that you can adjust to your liking. Moreover, voice chat will be enabled so you can discuss whatever you're watching together. And finally, Google has announced a new VR technology called Surab, which will allow content producers to display graphically stunning VR scenes on Daydream that will now only need microseconds to render instead of hours. Sora will be rolled out later this year and is compatible with all the major content creation platforms like for example Unity and Unreal. It will bring VR experiences to Daydream that before had only been able to be displayed on tethered VR devices like the Oculus Rift since the dedicated computer would do all the heavy lifting. With the Sora technology it seems that mobile VR even can easily compete with tethered VR experiences what graphical prowess is concerned. By applying the Sora technology, a scene that before needed hours to render was now rendered in only 30 milliseconds by a mobile VR processor and that is simply stunning. Now with all these announcements, Google has clearly positioned Daydream as one of the leading VR platforms moving forward. I'm personally very excited about all these developments and believe that Daydream has what it takes to become actually the market leader in the VR industry. What is your opinion? Do you also believe that these announcements will catapult Daydream to the very top of VR? Please weigh in in the comment section below. And that's it for this very exciting Daydream VR news flash. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to Daydream District yet, do so now. Keep on daydreaming and see you in the next video.